Lumber or timber is a collective term for harvested wood that has been manufactured into boards and planks. This process is part of something called wood production. Lumber is predominantly used for structural purposes but has many other uses as well. Lumber is classified as hardwood or softwood. Lumber is supplied either rough sawn as it came off of the saw or surfaced on one, two, three or all four sides. Besides pulpwood, rough lumber is the raw material for furniture making and other items requiring additional cutting and shaping. It is available in many species, usually hardwoods, but it is also readily available in softwoods such as white pine and red pine because of their low cost. Finished lumber is supplied in standard sizes, mostly for the construction industry, primarily softwood from coniferous species including pine, fir and spruce, cedar, and hemlock, but also some hardwood, for high-grade flooring. Terminology, in the United Kingdom and other Commonwealth countries such as Australia and New Zealand, timber is a term used for sawnwood products, such as floorboards, whereas generally in the United States and Canada, it refers to standing or felled trees, before they are milled into boards referred to as lumber. Timber is also used there to describe sawn lumber not less than 5 inches in its smallest dimension. An example of the latter is often partially finished lumber used in timber frame construction. In the United Kingdom, the word lumber is rarely used in relation to wood and timber is almost universally used in its place. Lumber does, however, have several other meanings in the UK, including unused or unwanted items. Remanufactured lumber Remanufactured lumber refers to secondary or tertiary processing cutting of previously milled lumber. The term specifically refers to lumber cut for industrial or wood packaging use. Lumber is cut by ripsaw or resaw to create dimensions that are not usually processed by a primary sawmill. Resawing is the process of splitting 1 inch through 12 inch hardwood or softwood lumber into two or more thinner pieces of full length boards. For example, splitting a 10 foot 2x4 into two 10 foot 1x4s is considered resawing. Plastic lumber Structural lumber may also be produced from recycled plastic and new plastic stock, but its introduction has been strongly opposed by the forestry industry. Blending fiberglass in plastic lumber enhances its strength, durability, and fire resistance. Plastic fiberglass structural lumber can have a Class 1 flame spread rating of 25 or less, when tested in accordance with ASTM standard E84, which means it burns slower than almost all treated wood lumber. Conversion of wood logs, logs are converted into timber by being sawn, hewn, or split. Sawing with a rip saw is the most common because sawing allows logs of lower quality, with a regular grain and large knots, to be used and is more economical. Types of sawing are, plain sawn, a log sawn through without adjusting the position of the log and the grain runs across the width of the boards. Quarter sawn and rift sawn, these terms have been confused in history but generally mean lumber sawn so the annual rings are reasonably perpendicular to the sides of the lumber. Boxed heart, the pith remains within the piece with some allowance for exposure. Heart center, the center core of a log. Free of heart center, a side cut timber without any pith. Free of knots, no knots are present. Dimensional lumber. Dimensional lumber is a term used for lumber that is cut to standardized width and depth specified in inches. Carpenters extensively use dimensional lumber in framing wooden buildings. Examples of common sizes are 2A, 4, 2A, 6, and 4A, 4. The length of a board is usually specified separately from the width and depth. It is thus possible to find 2A, 4s that are 4, 8, or 12 feet in length. In the United States and Canada the standard lengths of lumber are 6 feet, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22 and 24 feet. For wall framing, stud, or pre-cut sizes are available, and commonly used. For an 8, 9, or 10 foot ceiling height, studs are available in 92A 5A 8 inches, 104A 5A 8 inches, and 116A 5A 8 inches. The term stud is used inconsistently to specify length, though, so where the exact length matters, one must specify the length explicitly. North American softwoods, 
solid dimensional lumber typically is only available up to lengths of 24 ft. Engineered wood products, manufactured by binding the strands, particles, fibers, or veneers of wood, together with adhesives, to form composite materials, offer more flexibility and greater structural strength than typical wood building materials. Pre-cut studs save a framer a lot of time as they are pre-cut by the manufacturer to be used in 8 AFT, 9 AFT and 10 AFT sealing applications, which means they have removed a few inches of the piece to allow for the sill plate and the double top plate with no additional sizing necessary. In the Americas, 2 biz, named for traditional board thickness in inches, along with the 4A, 4, are common lumber sizes used in modern construction. They are the basic building blocks for such common structures as balloon frame or platform frame housing. Dimensional lumber made from softwood is typically used for construction, while hardwood boards are more commonly used for making cabinets or furniture. Lumber's nominal dimensions are larger than the actual standard dimensions of finished lumber. Historically, the nominal dimensions were the size of the green, rough boards that eventually became smaller finished lumber through drying and planing. Today, the standards specify the final finished dimensions and the mill cuts the logs to whatever size it needs to achieve those final dimensions. Typically, that rough cut is smaller than the nominal dimensions because modern technology makes it possible and it uses the logs more efficiently. For example, a 2x4 board historically started out as a green, rough board actually 2 inches by 4 inches. After drying and planing, it would be smaller by a non-standard amount. Today, a 2x4 board starts out as something smaller than 2 inches by 4 inches and not specified by standards, and after drying and planing is reliably 1a1 or 2 inches x 3a1 or 2 inches. Early standards called for green rough lumber to be a full nominal dimension when dry. However, the dimensions have diminished over time. In 1910, a typical finished 1-inch board was 13 or 16 in. In 1928, that was reduced by 4%, and yet again by 4% in 1956. In 1961, at a meeting in Scottsdale, Arizona, the Committee on Grade Simplification and Standardization agreed to what is now the current U.S. standard, in part, the dressed size of a 1-inch board was fixed at 3 or 4 inch. While the dressed size of 2 inch lumber was reduced from 1A5 or 8 inch to the current 1A1 or 2 inch. Dimensional lumber is available in green, unfinished state, and for that kind of lumber, the nominal dimensions are the actual dimensions. Grades and Standards Individual pieces of lumber exhibit a wide range in quality and appearance with respect to knots, slope of grain, shakes and other natural characteristics. Therefore, they vary considerably in strength, utility and value. The move to set national standards for lumber in the United States began with publication of the American Lumber Standard in 1924, which set specifications for lumber dimensions, grade, and moisture content. It also developed inspection and accreditation programs. These standards have changed over the years to meet the changing needs of manufacturers and distributors, with the goal of keeping lumber competitive with other construction products. Current standards are set by the American Lumber Standard Committee, appointed by the Secretary of Commerce. Design values for most species and grades of visually graded structural products are determined in accordance with ASTM standards, which consider the effect of strength-reducing characteristics, low duration, safety and other influencing factors. The applicable standards are based on results of tests conducted in cooperation with the USDA Forest Products Laboratory. Design values for wood construction, which is a supplement to the ANSIAF and PA National Design Specification a registered trademark for wood construction, provides these lumber design values, which are recognized by the model building codes. A summary of the six published design values a euro including bending, shear parallel to grain, compression perpendicular to grain, compression parallel to grain, tension parallel to grain and modulus of elasticity can be found in structural properties and performance published by Woodworks. Canada has grading rules that maintain a standard among mills manufacturing similar woods to assure customers of uniform quality. 
grades standardize the quality of lumber at different levels and are based on moisture content, size and manufacture at the time of grading, shipping and unloading by the buyer. The National Lumber Grades Authority is responsible for writing, interpreting and maintaining Canadian lumber grading rules and standards. The Canadian Lumber Standards Accreditation Board monitors the quality of Canada's lumber grading and identification system. Attempts to maintain lumber quality over time have been challenged by historical changes in the timber resources of the United States a euro from the slow-growing virgin forests common over a century ago to the fast-growing plantations now common in today's commercial forests. Resulting declines in lumber quality have been of concern to both the lumber industry and consumers and have caused increased use of alternative construction products. Machine stress rated and machine evaluated lumber is readily available for end uses where high strength is critical, such as truss rafters, laminating stock, I beams, and web joints. Machine grading measures a characteristic such as stiffness or density that correlates with the structural properties of interest, such as bending strength. The result is a more precise understanding of the strength of each piece of lumber than is possible with visually graded lumber, which allows designers to use full design strength and avoid overbuilding. In Europe, strength grading of sawn softwood is done according to EN 14081 13 over 4 and sorted into nine classes. In increasing strength, these are C14, C16, C18, TH22, TH24. TH27, TH30, TH35 and TH40, C14 used for scaffolding or formwork, C24 general construction, C30 prefab roof trusses and where design requires somewhat stronger joists than C24 can offer, C40 usually seen in glue lamb, grading rules for African and South American sawn timber have been developed by ATIBT according to the rules of the Sages of Eva copyright S. Tropico Africans and is based on clear cuttings, established by the percentage of the clear surface. North American Hardwoods In North America, sizes for dimensional lumber made from hardwoods varies from the sizes for softwoods. Boards are usually supplied in random widths and lengths of a specified thickness and sold by the board foot. This does not apply in all countries. For example, in Australia many boards are sold to timber yards in packs with a common profile but not necessarily consisting of the same length boards. Also in North America, hardwood lumber is commonly sold in a quarter system when referring to thickness. 4-4 refers to a 1-inch thick board, 8-4 is a 2-inch thick board, etc. This system is not usually used for softwood lumber, although softwood decking is sometimes sold as 5 4. Hardwoods cut for furniture are cut in the fall and winter, after the sap has stopped running in the trees. If hardwoods are cut in the spring or summer, the sap ruins the natural color of the timber and decreases the value of the timber for furniture. Engineered lumber Engineered lumber is lumber created by a manufacturer and designed for a certain structural purpose. The main categories of engineered lumber are, laminated veneer lumber Euro LVL comes in 1A3 of 4 inch thicknesses with depths such as 9A1 or 2, 11A708, 14, 16, 18, or 24 inches, and are often doubled or tripled up. They function as beams to provide support over large spans, such as removed support walls and garage door openings, places where dimensional lumber isn't sufficient and also in areas where a heavy load is bearing from a floor, wall or roof above on a somewhat short span where dimensional lumber isn't practical. This type of lumber cannot be altered by holes or notches anywhere within the span or at the ends, as it compromises the integrity of the beam, but nails can be driven into it wherever necessary to anchor the beam or to add hangers for eye joists or dimensional lumber joists that terminate at an LVL beam. Would eye joists a euro sometimes called TJI? Trust joists, or BCI, all of which are brands of wood eye joists, they are used for floor joists in upper floors and also in first floor conventional foundation construction on piers as opposed to slab floor construction. They are engineered for long spans and are doubled up in places where a wall will be aligned over them, and sometimes tripled where heavy roof loaded support walls are placed above them. They consist of a top and bottom cord flange made from dimensional lumber with a webbing in between made from oriented strand board. 
the webbing can be removed up to certain sizes shapes according to the manufacturer's or engineer's specifications, but for small holes, wood eye joists come with knockouts, which are perforated, pre-cut areas where holes can be made easily, typically without engineering approval. When large holes are needed, they can typically be made in the webbing only and only in the center third of the span. The top and bottom cords cannot be cut. Sizes and shapes of the hole, and typically the placing of a hole itself, must be approved by an engineer prior to the cutting of the hole and in many areas, a sheet showing the calculations made by the engineer must be provided to the building inspection authorities before the hole will be approved. Some eye joists are made with W-style webbing like a truss to eliminate cutting and allow duct work to pass through. Finger jointed lumber are Euro solid dimensional lumber lengths typically are limited to lengths of 22 to 24 feet, but can be made longer by the technique of finger jointing lumber by using small solid pieces, usually 18 to 24 inches long, and joining them together using finger joints and glue to produce lengths that can be up to 36 feet long in two way. 6 size. Finger jointing also is predominant in pre-cut wall studs. It is also an affordable alternative for non-structural hardwood that will be painted. Care must be taken during construction to avoid nailing directly into a glued joint as stud breakage can occur. Glue lamb beams are Euro created from 2A, 4 or 2A, 6 stock by gluing the faces together to create beams such as 4A, 12 or 6A, 16. As such, a beam acts as one larger piece of lumber, thus eliminating the need to harvest larger, older trees for the same size beam. Manufactured trusses or Euro trusses are used in home construction as a prefabricated replacement for roof rafters and ceiling joists. It is seen as an easier installation and a better solution for supporting roofs as opposed to the use of dimensional lumber struts and purlins as bracing. In the southern USA and other parts, Stick framing with dimensional lumber roof support is still predominant. The main drawback of trusses are reduced attic space, time required for engineering and ordering, and a cost higher than the dimensional lumber needed if the same project were conventionally framed. The advantages are significantly reduced labor costs, consistency, and overall schedule savings. Various pieces and cuts. Square and rectangular forms, plank, slat, batten, board, laugh, strapping, cant. Various pieces are also known by their uses such as post, beam stud, rafter, joist, sill plate, wall plate. Rod forms, pole stick, timber piles, in the United States, pilings are mainly cut from southern yellow pines and Douglas firs. Treated pilings are available in CCA retentions of 0.60, 0.80, and 2.50 PCF if treatment is required. Defects in lumber, defects occurring in lumber are grouped into the following five divisions, conversion, during the process of converting timber to commercial form the following defects may occur, chip mark, this defect is indicated by the marks or signs placed by chips on the finished surface of timber, diagonal grain, improper sawing of timber, torn grain, when a small depression is made on the finished surface due to falling of some tool, wane, presence of original rounded surface in the finished product, defects due to fungi, fungi attack timber when these conditions are all present, the timber moisture content is above 25% on a dry weight basis, the environment is warm enough, air is present, wood with less than 25% moisture can remain free of decay for centuries. Similarly, Wood submerged in water may not be attacked by fungi if the amount of oxygen is inadequate. Fungi timber defects, blue stain, brown rot, dry rot, heart rot, sap stain, wet rot, white rot, following are the insects which are usually responsible for the decay of timber, wood boring beetles, marine borers, termites, carpenter ants, carpenter bee, natural forces. There are two main natural forces responsible for causing defects in timber, abnormal growth and rupture of tissues. Seasoning, the seasoning of lumber is typically done in a kiln or air dried. Defects due to seasoning are the number one cause for splinters and slivers. Durability and service life, under proper conditions, would provides excellent, lasting performance. However, 
It also faces several potential threats to service life, including fungal activity and insect damage a euro, which can be avoided in numerous ways. Section 2304.11 of the International Building Code addresses protection against decay and termites. This section provides requirements for non-residential construction applications, such as wood used above ground, as well as other applications. There are four recommended methods to protect wood frame structures against durability hazards and thus provide maximum service life for the building. All require proper design and construction. 1. Control moisture using design techniques to avoid decay. 2. Provide effective control of termites and other insects. 3. Use durable materials such as pressure-treated or naturally durable species of wood where appropriate. 4. Provide quality assurance during design and construction and throughout the building the Euro unregistered trademark S service life using appropriate maintenance practices. Moisture control, wood is a hygroscopic material, which means it naturally absorbs and releases water to balance its internal moisture content with the surrounding environment. The moisture content of wood is measured by the weight of water as a percentage of the oven dry weight of the wood fiber. The key to controlling decay is to control moisture. Once decay fungi are established, the minimum moisture content for decay to propagate is 22 to 24 percent, so building experts recommend 19 percent as the maximum safe moisture content for untreated wood in service. Water by itself does not harm the wood, but rather, wood with consistently high moisture content enables fungal organisms to grow. The primary objective when addressing moisture loads is to keep water from entering the building envelope in the first place, and to balance the moisture content within the building itself. Moisture control by means of accepted design and construction details is a simple and practical method of protecting a wood frame building against decay. Finally, for applications with a high risk of staying wet, Designers should specify durable materials such as naturally decay-resistant species or wood fitter Euro unregistered trademark S being treated with preservatives. Cladding, shingles, sill plates and exposed timbers or glue lamb beams are examples of potential applications for treated wood. Controlling termites and other insects, for buildings in termite zones, basic protection practices addressed in current building codes include the following. A Euro cent grade the building site away from the foundation to provide proper drainage. A Euro cent cover exposed ground in any crawl spaces with 6 mil polyethylene film and maintain at least 12 to 18 inches of clearance between the ground and the bottom of framing members above. A Euro cent support post columns by concrete piers so that there is at least 6 inches of clear space between the wood and exposed earth. A Euro cent install wood framing and sheathing in exterior walls at least 8 inches above exposed earth. Locate siding at least 6 inches from the finished grade. A Euro cent where appropriate and desired, ventilate crawl spaces according to local building codes. A Euro cent remove building material scraps from the job site before backfilling. If termites are found, eliminate their nests. A Euro cent if allowed by local regulation. Treat the soil around the foundation with an approved termiticide to provide protection against subterranean termites. Preservatives To avoid decay and termite infestation, it is important to separate untreated wood from the ground and other sources of moisture. These separations are required by many building codes and are considered necessary to maintain wood elements in permanent structures at a safe moisture content for decay protection. When it is not possible to separate wood from the sources of moisture, designers often rely on preservative treated wood. Wood can be treated with a preservative that improves service life under severe conditions without altering its basic characteristics. It can also be pressure impregnated with fire retardant chemicals that improve its performance in a fire. One of the early treatments to fireproof lumber which retard fires was developed in 1936 by Prodexel Corporation in which lumber is heavily treated with salt. Wood does not deteriorate just because it gets wet. When wood breaks down, it is because an organism is eating it as food. Preservatives work by making the food source inedible to these organisms. Properly preservative treated wood can have 5 to 10 times the service life of untreated wood. Preserved wood is used most often for railroad ties, utility poles, 
marine piles, decks, fences and other outdoor applications. Various treatment methods and types of chemicals are available, depending on the attributes required in the particular application and the level of protection needed. There are two basic methods of treating, with and without pressure. Non-pressure methods are the application of preservative by brushing, spraying or dipping the piece to be treated. Deeper, more thorough penetration is achieved by driving the preservative into the wood cells with pressure. Various combinations of pressure and vacuum are used to force adequate levels of chemical into the wood. Pressure treating preservatives consist of chemicals carried in a solvent. Chromated copper arsenate, once the most commonly used wood preservative in North America began being phased out of most residential applications in 2004. Replacing it are in copper quat and copper azole. All wood preservatives used in the U.S. and Canada are registered and regularly re-examined for safety by the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency and Health Canada's Pest Management and Regulatory Agency, respectively. Timber framing Timber framing is a style of construction which uses heavier framing elements than modern stick framing, which uses dimensional lumber. The timbers originally were tree bowls squared with a broad axe or adze and joined together with joinery without nails. Modern timber framing has been growing in popularity in the United States since the 1970s. Environmental effects of lumber, green building minimizes the impact or environmental footprint of a building. Wood is a major building material that is renewable and uses the SUNY Euro unregistered trademark S energy to renew itself in a continuous sustainable cycle. Studies show manufacturing wood uses less energy and results in less air and water pollution than steel and concrete. However, demand for lumber is blamed for deforestation. Residual wood, the conversion from coal to biomass power is a growing trend in the United States. The UK, Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, Australia, Fiji, Madagascar, Mongolia, Russia, Denmark, Switzerland and Swaziland governments all support an increased role for energy derived from biomass, which are organic materials available on a renewable basis and include residues and or byproducts of the logging, sawmilling and papermaking processes. In particular, they view it as a way to lower greenhouse gas emissions by reducing consumption of oil and gas while supporting the growth of forestry, agriculture and rural economies. Studies by the U.S. government have found the county Euro unregistered trademark S combined forest and agriculture land resources have the power to sustainably supply more than one third of its current petroleum consumption. Biomass is already an important source of energy for the North American forest products industry. It is common for companies to have cogeneration facilities, also known as combined heat and power which convert some of the biomass that results from wood and paper manufacturing to electrical and thermal energy in the form of steam. The electricity is used to, among other things, dry lumber and supply heat to the dryers used in paper making. See also References Further reading, SATA, R. O'Connor, J. A. Synthesis of Research on Wood Products and Greenhouse Gas Impacts Pinnovations ISBN A 978-0-86488-546-3 External links, National Hardwood Lumber Association, Timber Development Association of NSW, Australia, TDA, Timber Decking Association UK, TRADA, Timber Research and Development Association, The Forest Products Laboratory. US Main Wood Products Research Lab. Madison, W.I., W.C.T.E., World Conference on Timber in Jiming Euro Euro June 20 Euro 24, 2010, Riva del Garda, Trentino, Italy, Canadian Wood Council.